Hi folks, Mr. Blackwell here and this uh, statistics lesson is on power law models and uh, your transformation of those. Uh, before we do that though, let's take care of this board problem. Which of the following uh, statements is or are true? Correlation and regression requires that there are clearly identified explanatory and response variables. Well, correlation does need an explanatory and response variable, but and, you know, this clearly identifies a pretty strong descriptive right there. So I don't think it's choice one right there, okay? Uh, scatter plots require both variables to be quantitative. That's true. And every least square regression line passes through the ordered pair, the average of your x, comma, the average of your y's. That's true also. So it's two and three. So which one is that? Two and three. So it looks like choice C. Alrighty. All right. And I'm doing this during lunch, and my school is... Um, is uh, announcement uh, addicted. They love to do announcements at lunch, at, at before school, after school. So you may hear an announcement here and there. So I think we just had one. All right, so this one's a prediction in power law models. Okay, so power law models are of the form of y equals a times x to the p. Notice x is not the exponent, it's the base. p is the exponent. Okay, so if it's a number in the exponent, it's a power law, you guys. Exponents have the x in the exponent. So this one is exponential right here. This one is a power function right here. Okay, power has a number. Exponentials have the x in the exponent. Okay, pretty easy. So examples of power law models, area of a circle, pi r squared. So y equals pi x squared. You'd plug in your calculator. All right, volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So uh, we'd plug in y equals 4 thirds pi r x cubed. Okay, that's okay, honey. You can sit down. Uh, I'm just doing a uh, lesson here, Ex today's lesson. Expect uh, area to go up with the square of the dimensions. Uh, you want to see? Um, and so, uh, so uh, for example, and expect volume to go up with the cube of the dimensions because uh, volume is always in cubic root units and area is always in square units. Uh, Kleber's law states that the rate at which an animal uses energy goes up to, to the three-fourths power of their body weight. So if this is my exponent right here, then this is a, a power function right there, okay? So these are all power functions, all right? So, uh, or E, which would be Y, I'm sorry, it's clapping a mosquito, uh, equals A times uh, three-fourths to the three-fourths power, A times X to the three-fourths power. This works from bacteria all the way to whales, okay? Uh, power law models become very linear when you apply the log on both variables, both the x and the y. Remember, exponential, we just applied the log on the y. So when you log both sides of this little guy, you get that equation, which expands to that right there, and that p will come down uh, to get out in front. So when you log, you're going to get that function right there. This uh, uh, now has the form of y equals a plus bx where p becomes uh, the slope, okay? So here's my uh, mx plus b. This is my slope right here, so my p right here would be the slope, okay? Just remember, you guys, that y stands for the log of y, and this bx stands for the p log of x right there on power functions, you guys. So by taking the log of both sides, it'll straighten out your scatter plot of y against x. Okay, so uh, remember the example we did in um, the first example of this chapter, 4.1, on just basic transformations with... Um, the body weight versus the brain weight. So when we did that, we got uh, this function in our calculator right here. So um, we'd have list one in there, list two in there, and this was it ended up being a power function. So if you log both sides, you have the log of y equals um, um, the log of x right there. So you get the log of x, okay? And so that was our equation that we got. And so to undo this uh, and get the equation you can work with, you, uh, you do 10 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to go 10 to the power on the left equals 10 to the power on the right. Remember, whatever you do to one side of an equal sign, I just took this equation right here and did 10 to this side equals 10 to this side right here. All right, and then from your algebra class, there's that equation again. From your algebra class, remember x squared times x cubed equals, uh, you add those exponents. I'm going to go backwards. Here's my x to the 2 plus 3. This is my x. This would be the 2 plus 3 right here. So I'm going to rewrite it like this, uh, x squared times x cubed. So it's 10 to this power times 10 to this power right there. You guys with me? And then another algebra rule, powers, oh, sorry, my blah blah rule. If you have 10 uh, to the log base 10, that just equals y hat right there. And, um, and then so, so 
uh, let's see, from algebra, uh, algebra uh, powers raised to powers, I multiply them. So instead of having 2 times 3, I'm going to write it as 3 times 2. So instead of having this times this, I just did uh, uh, log of x times this right here. And then I'm going to use blah blah again with this one right here. 10 to the log of x is just x right there. Okay, so there's my equation right there. That's the one I can work with, and that's just magical right there. So Bigfoot was estimated to be 127 kilograms, which is about 280 pounds. How big was his brain? Some kids said, is his brain, because they think that he's still alive. <laughs> so we get that equation right there. So we're going to plug in, um, uh, that's the equation right there. We're going to plug in 127 for x. x stood for the weight right there. So there we go and we get uh, to his brain to be about 333.7 grams. Yeehaw! Alright, so for comparisons, the average gorilla weighs about 140 kilograms and has an average brain weight of about 406 grams. Alright, let's... Uh, so in a fishing tournament, you're going to use a fish's length to measure its weight. So uh, since uh, length is one-dimensional and weight is typically a volume, it's three-dimensional, you, uh, you can be thinking of W, which is weight, equals A times your length cubed, okay? So a marine research lab gives you some, uh, so, uh, gives you some, I don't know what this, oh, sorry, this is data, sorry, I couldn't read my, I didn't put a space right there, gives you some data. I was thinking data on. I, was, I didn't know what I was talking about. Some data on a certain fish's length and weight, okay? So, uh, see table 4.3 on this. And so here's table 4.3 right here. Uh, and uh, it's right there. So go ahead, and it's on my next page. Whoops, come on now. Go away. Uh, all right, so uh, I just have this. Put, um, put uh, your length in list 1 and your weight in list 2 in your calculator. All right, what you're going to do then is you're going to plot that. So uh, do a, a stat plot, and you get a graph that kind of looks like that. Okay, now I don't know if that's exponential. Looking at that graph, I wouldn't know if it was exponential or power, because power does the same thing as exponential. Okay, and sometimes it's hard to tell. And if we didn't know that this was a power rule, and we do because we have, you know, the 3 is a, is a number. It's not an exponent, so it's a power function right here. But if we didn't know it came from, you know, the weight versus length right there, then I would do um, uh, the ratios. I'd do, um, you know, the bottom number divided by the top number and the next bottom divided by the top. See if the ratios are the same. Or right number divided by left number, depending on if they did it in columns or, or rows. Okay, so log both sides of this. Okay, you get that. All right, remember this looks uh, uh, like the linear equation in your graphing calculator, y equals a plus bx. Actually, my calculator says uh, ax plus b. I don't know about yours. All right, and then uh, so we're going to log list 1 and in list 3, and we're going to log list 2 in list 4. So go up to uh, the top of list 3, and right at the top, highlight list 3 and punch in there log list 1. Go up to the top of list 4, highlight in there log list 2. And then we're going to plot list 3 and list 4. Okay, so when you do that, look at that. Magical. Nice and straight line right there. So uh, so what we're going to do now is confirm with, uh, with your graphing calculator that your equation gets the same as mine. Look how strong R is right there. Pretty darn cool. All right. Now, uh, even though it's almost 1, it's still important to look at a residual plot. And if you're in my class, I, I'm going to go over that with you guys. But this video takes too long. Just check out my other ones, how to, how to do residuals. All right, so your residuals look like that, and there's no clear pattern right there, so and they're pretty evenly spaced on top and on bottom. So this could be a this represents a nice straight line right there. Okay, there's no uh, clear patterns happening. So the last step is to do your inverse transformation to get your final accurate power equation for the original equation. So here's the equation right there. Going to uh, do 10 to both sides. So there we go, 10 to both sides. So over here, 10 to the log of w is just w. Okay. So there's W right there. And then uh, remember, uh, this is like uh, x to the 2 plus 3 power, which is x to the 2 times x to the 3. So, and then right here, when I multiply these powers, I, I chose to put the log of L in here because 10 to the log of L is just L right here. And I'm going to go ahead and get the decimal of this, punch in 10 to the negative 1.8894, and you get uh, 0 0.0126. This is my blah blah rule. This is just L. There's my equation right there. So now what I'm going to do is um, uh, we're going to, that's just the equation right there. We're now going to uh, uh, plot this equation, which is right here. 
put it in uh, y sub 2, deselect y sub 1 so it won't graph y sub 1, and we're going to put this in y sub 2 and graph the equation with list 1 and list 2, and you said it should get a wonderful graph that looks like that. We just found the equation that would represent all those babies right there. That's pretty darn cool, isn't it? I think so. All right, if you're in my class, that's what would be your homework assignment. Take care, everybody.